Hey everybody, I'm Aaron from Aaron Summer Studios, and today I'm going to discuss with you events and life celebrations that we currently cover. Did you know that there are eight events that actually occur before a wedding day? Eight parts to a traditional wedding day, and four events after a wedding, as well as many that reoccur? Maybe you didn't. Well, today, like I said, we're going to discuss all these different events, um, and of course, the big one we're going to discuss is that breakdown of weddings as well. So just to get started, let's talk about um, the many different types of events that we do cover. For baby showers, um, or any shower for that matter, it could be a bridal shower, um, gender reveal parties, baby first birthday, cake smash, bar, bat mitzvah, quinceaneras, sweet sixteens, um, any birthday celebration you could think of. Um, it could be maybe, you know, 40 or 50 years um, old, those signature birthday events. We also cover graduations, um, whether it be high school or college um, or any type of other, you know, perhaps it could be like a vocational school and so forth. Repass dinners, um, celebration of life events, funeral mass, baptism, communion, confirmation, corporate events, red carpet events, union events, holiday parties, housewarming, fundraisers, auctions, festivals, concerts, uh, divorce parties, uh, survive parties, whether it be an illness or a disaster, um, and so forth, and, and plus many, many more. Um, so we cover a lot of different types of events. So the first thing we're going to cover is the eight events that happen prior to an actual wedding. So the first thing that's going to happen is going to be the proposal. Um, you know, how do you know if you're going to get married, right, without being proposed to? So that would be the first one. It's usually completed six months to two years prior to your wedding day, and they take about anywhere from 15 minutes to two hours long based on how elaborate the proposal itself is. Some are destination proposals, and others may be just at a local park, um, and so forth. Um, number two, this is again prior to the wedding day, would be your engagement session. We can, uh, we can accommodate doing an engagement session right after the proposal, or it could be one of our mini sessions, one of our love story engagement sessions, or perhaps a session on another day that you want to fulfill. Um, the engagement sessions themselves, they should be done three to six months prior. Why? Because we need time to edit and get those images back to you. You may want to use them for your bridal website. You may want to use them for, uh, you know, cards or maybe you want to have frames at the wedding when people enter the, the reception hall. You may want them to sign that. So in order for us to get that data back to you in time so you can create all these amazing things, um, we need to have that time. So I recommend three to six months prior. And they take anywhere from 15 minutes to three hours. Um, why three hours? Why so long? Because we do something called a love story engagement session, if you choose to have that option, where we make a video and we interview you and we talk about, you know, how you met and the proposal and fun little tidbits. Sometimes people like to play these at the actual reception. They have the DJs will play them on a screen if you have that as part of your package with the DJ. So that's something that you might want to keep in mind as well. Um, just timelines, you know, on how long these things take and what they're going to be used for in the future. The best thing you can do is be prepared. Um, I tell everyone to expect the unexpected and always be prepared for as much as possible and that will save you a lot of frustration on the back end in the planning process. So number three for prior to wedding day is going to be your engagement party. Um, if you have one we can cover that. Again you can do that three to six months prior. They take about three to five hours long based on your party. It could be at, at a hall, it could be at home. Um, we'll cover any of that. Bridal shower, again, one of those things that's going to be one to three months prior. So we're still we're still in that three month prior. There's a lot of things that happen three months prior. Um, so it's good to plan these out. If you guys want this list, please reach out to me. Send me um, on our contact form. Send me an email and I will actually reply back and I will send you this entire list um, typed out for you. So now, we're, like I said, we're at the bridal shower, one to three months three to five hours long. It depends on what you want to have covered. If you just want to have a surprise type of thing or you have people coming in, you want that photograph or if you want all the gifts photographed being opened, um, that's completely up to you and it's customizable. Uh, bachelor parties and bachelor parties, that would be five and six. Um, some people actually do want those covered and we can follow you around if you're going to go to a bar hop or you're going to go to, you know, have a party somewhere in particular. Uh, we definitely have the team. It could be myself, it could be others. If it's happening at the same night and it's both for the bachelor and bachelor party or it's two bachelor parties, two bachelor parties, let us know so we can have two photographers that actually separate and go out on and follow on those two unique um, events that are happening. Um, those parties we expect to happen a little bit sooner, closer to the wedding. 
So the three months doesn't really fall um, well into that. It's usually about one month um, or two months, probably more like one month prior to the wedding that that would happen. And both would be about three to five hours um, based on that. Um, number seven, it comes to a bridal boudoir session. So a bridal boudoir session, not everybody does it. Um, some do. There's a couple different ways we can go about it. So the bridal boudoir session could be the bride in a bridal style lingerie. Um, it's tasteful. We don't do anything tasteless. Um, really the word boudoir itself is a French word. It comes from, you know, like her, her chamber or her bedroom. So where she'd be getting, you know, dressed. So that's what that's about. We really, really actually enjoy the fact when people choose to do the boudoir session because it's just an element of confidence that we, that's able to give back to you before your wedding day. Um, and it's also a really great intimate gift to give to your partner. So with the boudoir sessions, they don't have to be just you. So it could be the bride, it could be the groom, and it could be the couple together. So whether it be two brides, two grooms, um, a bride and a groom, we can do a couple boudoir session if that's what you prefer. Again, they're tasteful and they're for you. Um, those boudoir sessions can happen either in your, you know, a place of your choice, whether it be your residence or a friend's house, maybe something that you like that ambiance, or we can do it in a hotel. Um, I actually really, really love like Verbo and um, the, you know, Airbnbs because if you get a spot like that, we can, I can come in, do the photo shoot, and then you guys can have like a date weekend together. And it's kind of a new environment, ambiance, you guys choose it. It could be as romantic as you want, it could be rustic, it could be whatever reflects the two of you as a couple. So just a couple things to keep in mind when it comes to that. So our last thing that happens before the wedding day is number eight, which would be a rehearsal dinner. So a rehearsal dinner is really simple. One to two hours, best completed one week to one day prior. And that's it, it's usually the day before. Some people like to do it a little earlier, but it is pretty close to the wedding itself. Um, the pictures themselves, obviously if it's one day right before the wedding, you're not gonna get them right away, you're gonna get them probably around the time you get your wedding pictures back. But just know that we do cover that. So just to recap real quick, these are the events prior to a wedding day. <clears throat> Proposal, engagement session, engagement party, bridal shower, bachelor party, bachelorette party, bridal boudoir session, and the rehearsal dinner. So those are the eight events that happened prior to the wedding day. Now let's talk about the wedding itself and the eight parts to a traditional wedding. Now, of course, I say traditional because this is the full range of what um, I'm here in New York and this is what currently a full wedding day would be like if you were to um, have a full wedding day in New York. However, some couples like to mix and match. And so in mixing and matching, um, they choose this thing, they pull out this thing, and you know, and I'm saying thing because you're gonna see why there's so many parts to make it unique to what you want, your timeline, and how long you have your venue. So on the wedding day itself, okay, a typical wedding, um, I wanna say is around eight hours right now. Um, however, a wedding itself can range anywhere from two to 14 hours based on um, traditions and events that are going on and what you have going on that you want to have on your particular wedding day. So the first part to a traditional full day wedding day is getting ready. So the getting ready takes about one to three hours. So why so long? Well, we have makeup, we have hair. Sometimes we have the groom wants pictures um, with the groomsmen and the bride wants pictures with the bridesmaids. Um, it also could, if it's two grooms or it's two brides, they still may have separate rooms where they want to have us photograph both of them getting ready at the same time. So that would be getting ready. Getting ready also has, besides the makeup and hair on our end, that is the time that we like to photograph the flowers, the details such as the rings. Uh, we also have special event, you know, special little things like traditional things such as something borrowed, something blue, something new. Those things would also be part of that timeline. We also have um, the garter being put on, um, getting in the dress, or getting on, getting in the tux. We have parents, grandparents, who may be assisting in this um, before the, you know, before they actually do the ceremony. So the, all these images would be taken right at that time of the getting ready, um, just the getting ready moments themselves. Also, if you want to put flowers on mom or grandma, or you want to put flowers on dad or grandpa, you know, all of those things are going to be photographed during that time as well during that getting ready part. So our first look would be our second part to our day, 
if you choose to do a first look. So some couples want to do the first look because they want to enjoy their cocktail hour and by doing the first look you can do portraits right after the first look and then the rest of the day is easy breezy, ceremony and just partying pretty much um, and enjoying your guests of course. However, some couples still like to not see each other until that walk down the aisle, we respect that. So for those couples, they would skip this part of our um, our you know eight events of the wedding or eight parts to the wedding day. So you know again, this is up to you what you want to do. Um, I personally like the first look only because it breaks the ice. Those pictures are a little bit more relaxed, and if we don't finish anything at that time. We now have time to grab those few pictures during cocktail hour instead of rushing everything through the day, which is really fantastic when it comes to itineraries and timelines. And I, and I tell everybody the same thing. I say, on a wedding day, always expect the unexpected because the unexpected will definitely happen. We do our best as professionals to make sure that everything runs you know, smooth for you. Um, that's why we like to talk to the other um, vendors as well and just make sure they're on the same page. But for you, you know, it's it, the more planning you guys have and you know, you give us more time to get our jobs done, it makes our life, you know, a thousand times easier and you'll have a much better experience for it. So first look is gonna take 45 minutes to an hour and that's only because of the portrait part of it. If you're not gonna do portraits during that first look, it could be as, honestly, it could be as small as like 15 minutes. It's it's pretty quick thing to do. Um, typically what we do, or what I do is I have the, the groom will be standing in a, you know, beautiful ambiance that's there to be off in the distance and then I will photograph him from his perspective. I photograph the bride from behind coming up from behind him. She'll come up to him or her and touch the shoulder and then that's that. They turn around, they embrace and that's what a first look is. A first look is seeing each other prior to seeing um, his first time seeing each other walk down the aisle and then we just do pictures and that's that's really what a first look is. So our third part to the wedding day is ceremony, which is very important because the ceremony is all of your religious um, traditions. The ceremony is how you know you guys embrace each other and you make your commitments and your vows to each other. So whether whether it's re a religious ceremony or it's a ceremony that's non-religious, either way, it is going to be your commitment and your vow to each other. So it's extremely important to have coverage for that. Ceremonies can take anywhere from 30 minutes to two hours. Um, two hours are gonna be more or less, um, in certain faiths they may have a, uh, you know, Christian faith they may have a full mass. A mass may be an hour long. If they choose to do a receiving line afterwards, that does take up time where they greet each other guests. So, so yes, a ceremony can take anywhere from 30 minutes to two hours long based on the traditions involved. So just be aware of that when you are planning and booking your photographer. Um, so that way you know how much time is needed for each one of these things. So we're about halfway through, I just want to recap again. Getting ready takes about one to three hours. First look is about 45 minutes to an hour. Ceremony can take anywhere from 30 minutes to two hours long. So after the ceremony would come cocktail hour for your guests. Um, for you, it may be family portraits if you haven't done them already after the first look and bridal party portraits as well as romantic formals. So those are three different things that happen right after ceremony. So number four is family portraits, number five is bridal party portraits, and six is romantic romantic formals. All in all, the, the complete deal takes about an hour long altogether. If you wanna break it down, I mean, you had more time to do it, then I would say 30 minutes for each would be more than ideal to get the best images. If you plan on taking these pictures not at the venue where you had the ceremony taking or not at the reception venue, which is to follow, but you want to go to an additional location such as a park or a waterfront of some sort, please make sure that you include the time for travel because now that changes everything and that whole thing may wind up being two hours based on travel and traffic um, if you do plan on going to an additional location. So those are our, you know, our images that will be taken right after the ceremony and that's your guests will be going to cocktail hour. So cocktail hour is now our seventh part after those different parts. And cocktail hour is that hour. So if you did your images, um, took all your pictures and your portraits right after the first look, then you don't. You can actually go and enjoy your cocktail hour, which is great because you want to recharge. Most venues that I've experienced have a maitre d' or somebody that comes out and make sure that you have food and snacks and beverages. It's a long day. Um, you're getting up early, you're getting ready, make sure you stay hydrated and nourished. Um, we don't want anybody to pass out or collapse. Um, you know, so just make sure that you're super safe and know 
all of these parts, how much time is involved, and what you need so you can have the best experience. So after cocktail hour, we go straight into reception. And the reception itself takes about three to five hours, typical reception. You'll have your entrance, your entrance rather, and your dances, toast, and all, of, all other traditions to follow. Um, some cultures do have weddings that take place over a couple days instead of just one day in, in particular. So for those, obviously the timeline would be a little bit different, it would be a little bit longer. Um, we could definitely accommodate with that. Um, but overall, this is just to give you an idea of a traditional American wedding um, here in the state of New York and what is involved. So once again, <clears throat> the eight parts to a wedding day are getting ready. First look with photo portraits, ceremony, family portraits, bridal party portraits, romantic formals, cocktail hour, and reception. Let's go on to what happens after the wedding day. So we have a couple of events that some people do, some choose to opt out on. But we have year six here, so trash the, de trash the dress is one of them, <clears throat> and you know, F the tux. So what are those two events? Those two events can be done two to four weeks after the wedding. They take about 45 minutes to an hour. It's kind of like, hey, I'm never going to wear this again. This is it. I found the love of my life, and you know, the day is over. It's kind of like a, a rite of passage. So some people like to, you know, jump in a pond with the with the dress or, you know, burn the dress or burn the tux and or they may do a smoke bomb or they may do ink splatters on it or, or cut it and create some kind of artwork during the session. It's really unlimited in how you want to express yourself as a Tritus Passage that you have found the one and you are done with your wedding day and you are happy and you're moving forward and we can work with you on that however you want to express yourself that way. Um, so once again, one event's trash trust the dress and the second one is F the tux and our third one is the honeymoon so <clears throat> honeymoon actually would happen before those two events um, so what about a honeymoon why would you want a photographer to follow your honeymoon well we're not gonna photograph anything inappropriate I can tell you that right now but what we would photograph is maybe you're going on a, on a, on a cruise or maybe you're going to a, some kind of island or resort and you want beautiful images of your trip together, your, your venture, your first adventure together as husband and wife or wife and wife or husband and husband. So <clears throat> this is where you would have us come in. We wouldn't stay for the whole honeymoon. We would actually probably stay for you know the first few days um, or sig significant parts of what you want. If you want us to stay for the whole thing, that's fine too. It's considered a destination event. Um, pricing is a little bit different. It's a little bit more custom, but that is something that we can cover. So that would be the honeymoon. <clears throat> Best completed, again, two days to two weeks after. It takes about three to five days. It could take longer, it could be shorter based on what your needs are. Another event that happens after a wedding day is a happily ever after party. So happily ever after parties are really for people that elope. They do a destination wedding. They're away, they get married, and their friends and family can't celebrate that with them because they just happen to not be with them on that trip which is fine because then now it's kind of like a, it's a celebration almost like having a reception after you're already married. That's what a happily ever after party is and we do cover those. So they come after the actual wedding day. Um, they're often completed one to two weeks after. They take about three to five hours. It's a typical reception timeline. There'll be an entrance, there may be speeches. We can do some family portraits as well. There are examples on our website that you can check out. Um, so that's, that's what a happily ever after is. Number five would be your yearly anniversaries and vow renewals. Uh, some couples like to do a, a vow renewal every year. Others like to do them only on the significant, as they call it, anniversaries, such as first year, five, uh, 15 or 25, and you know, on and on. So that's the anniversaries. They take about one to eight hours, depending on the celebration. Uh, we could do a party, we can you know, photograph dinner, we can just do a portrait session with you. All of these things are available to you. That's another event that happens after the wedding day. Um, and then number six is just gonna be all the types of events that you do first, your first as a married couple, your first Christmas, uh, it could be your first Halloween, all your first hol holidays themselves and other special events that you wanna have photographed and commemorated. It's important that you have a photographer to photograph those events. If you do them as a group package, we can give you a significant discount where we have Maybe all your first, you set up the dates ahead of time and we set up a contract and then you're set, you're covered. All your firsts are covered for that entire year, that first year as a married couple. Once again, prior to the wedding day, you have the proposal, the engagement session, the engagement party, 
the bridal shower, bachelor party, bachelorette party, you have the bridal boudoir session, you have the rehearsal dinner. Then on the wedding day, you have getting ready, first look with photo portraits, the ceremony, family portraits, then you have bridal party portraits, romantic formals, cocktail hour, then reception. And then after the wedding, we have the honeymoon, trash the dress, F the tux, we have happily ever after party, we have your yearly anniversaries, vow renewals, all of your firsts as a married couple, and that's pretty much it. As far as other events go, like I mentioned in the beginning of this video, we do have baby showers, maternity uh, parties, uh, sessions, we have gender reveal parties, baby first birthdays, cake smash, bar mitzvah, bad mitzvahs, quinceaneras, sweet sixteens, all birthday celebrations, graduations, repast dinners, uh, celebration of life events, funeral mass, baptism, communion, confirmation, corporate events, red carpet events, union events, holiday parties, housewarming, fundraisers, auctions, festivals, concerts, divorce parties, I survive parties, and so much more. So thank you again for watching our video, and if you have any questions about any events at all, or something that maybe you didn't hear that you want us to photograph, don't hesitate to ask. Um, we'd love to be able to assist you with that, and we'll see you at your next event.